Good morning, students. In the last class, we discussed the topic that is polarization. So, what is polarization? So, polarization is a phenomenon of the light that transforms, that is, transformed from the transverse, that is, it is a process which transfers unpolarized light into polarized light. So, what is unpolarized light? So, in unpolarized light, the or the waves that is the light waves which vibrates in all the planes so that one we call as unpolarized light right so this one is the unpolarized light so polarization is a phenomenon which transforms unpolarized light into polarized light so that phenomenon we call as polarization so this one represents polarized light so in what is polarized light means the particles or the waves which vibrates that is electric vectors which vibrate in only one plane so either along xy plane or along yz plane So these are the representations of the polarized light. So this represents what indeed these electric vectors which are vibrating, these are the electric vectors which are vibrating in the direction of the incidence. That is, these are parallel to the plane of the board. So that one is the first representation. And second one is here the electric vectors which are perpendicular to the direction and also perpendicular to the plane of the board. So if we write this one, we will write like this. So into the board, in and outside. So these are vibrating inside and outside. That's why this we are representing only by the dots, right? So these are called as the polarized light. So the phenomena of polarization gives us or proves the phenomenon of polarization proves light wave is light is a transverse wave the phenomenon of the polarization proves light is a transverse wave so next we will prove that one how we will get the light wave as transverse wave So here for the polarization, the unpolarized light is transformed into the polarized light by using the polaroids. So if we observe the proof for the light is a transverse wave, so for that consider one polaroid, that is polarized sheet. So this one is the polarized sheet. We call this one as P1. This one is the polarized sheet that is P1 and this is the direction of the unpolarized light so unpolarized light is represented by the arrow marks with that so this represents the unpolarized light with dots in the middle this one is the unpolarized light so what happens here when the source any source that is ordinary source from that source the light which are falls onto the polaroid so here what happens the electric vector which are in the direction of the molecules are get absorbed and the only electric vectors which are transmitted that is which are here the only electric vectors which are transmitted, which are perpendicular to the direction of the 
are aligned molecules right so these are the electric vectors which are perpendicular to that of the aligned molecules right so this one is the polarized line polarized line right so here polarized consists of a long chain molecules which are arranged in a particular manner or particular direction so when an unpolarized light falls onto the polarized so unpolarized light consists of the electric vector which vibrates in all the direction here in the polarized the molecules which contains that is in polarized it contains the long chain molecules in which pattern these molecules are arranged so in that pattern all the electric vectors from this source of light are get absorbed and the only light which are transmitted here is the electric vectors which are perpendicular to the direction of the orientation of the molecules hence we get here is the polarized light so polarized polarized consists of a long chain molecules as we discussed in the last class right so if the molecules are arranged along the horizontal then we get the polarized light in vertical that is the polarized light is perpendicular to the direction of the orientation of the molecules so here we get the polarized light right so this is actually we studied in the last class now so this one is the path axis this one we call as path axis right now here the unpolarized light have a intensity i after which pass through the polarized then the polarized light will reduces the actual intensity by half so if the unpolarized light has intensity i then the intensity is reduced in the polarized light so here intensity is reduced to half intensity is reduced to half right when unpolarized light is passing that falls onto the polarized then here we are getting the electric vector which are perpendicular to the orientation of the molecules that is e is perpendicular to that of the orientation of the molecules and in the polarized the light the intensity is reduced to, to half next if we rotate this polarized right so now what we are going to do is now if we rotate this polarized either in clockwise direction or in anti clockwise direction then there will be no change in the intensity of the polarized light that is the transmitted so this one we call as polarized light or transmitted light so the light which are transmitting from this polarized so if we rotate the polarized then the there will be no change in the transmitted light and also there will be no change in the intensity so this one we have to remember when we rotate this polarized right when we rotate the polarized p1 so polarized we given the name p1 when we rotate the polarized p1 there will be no change in the direction of transmitted light or polarized light and also there will be and also there will be no change in the intensity that is intensity remains same as before we get the polarized if it is in the zero degree we get the intensity which is reduced to half when we rotate this polarized either in clockwise direction or in anti clockwise direction then there will be no change in the direction of the 
transmitted light and also there will be no change in the intensity of the polarized light that is the intensity remains same that is intensity is reduced to half so if the unpolarized light has the intensity 100% then for the polarized light the intensity will be 50% that is reduced by the half right so our understanding this one so this one is the first case when an unpolarized light pass through the polarized then we get the electric vectors which are vibrating perpendicular to the orientation of the molecules right so this one we call as the polarized light because these electric vectors which are oscillating in or vibrating in only one plane so this polarized light the intensity is reduced to half so next what we are going to do is when we rotate the polarized so when we rotate this polarized then what happens there will be no change in the transmitted light and also there will be no change in the intensity so in the previous what we are getting the intensity the same intensity we are getting here there will be no change in the direction and also there will be no change in the intensity next in the next case place an identical polarized that is which we used in the previous that is here we have used the polarized so similar polarized another one we are going to use so this right as it is this one is the polarized p1 the similar polarized we are going to use before the polarized p1 this one is the identical polarized that is same polarized for this we given the name polarized p2 so if this is the axis of the direction of propagation of wave so here we have one polarized light which are coming from an ordinary source now observe here when so here this is the pass axis and here is the pass axis right here what we did means considering that is we are taking one more polarized which is similar to that of polarized one place before the polarized one that is in between the unpolarized light and to the polarized one then when unpolarized light falls onto the polarized then what happens we get the electric vector that is light vector which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation that is which is perpendicular to the orientation of the molecules that are present in p so now here we have the intensity i then after which pass through polarized p2 the intensity is reduced to half that is it becomes i by 2 if these two are in parallel as we kept here then these polarized light will again pass through the polarized one then we get the electric vector which are vibrating in perpendicular direction that is it observes the all other vibrations then we get the polarized light so here once again the intensity is reduced by half here the intensity is i by 2 then again it will be reduced by half means i by 2 divided by 2 that is i divided by 4 right if you place one more polarized then again the intensity goes on decreasing right now observe here keeping these two stationary that is we are not rotating any of these polarized then we get the intensity which is reduced by 1 by 4th of the original intensity of the unpolarized light now keeping p2 stationary so here keeping polarized p2 
stationary. That is, we are not rotating this polaroid. Now, rotate the polaroid P1. Rotate the polaroid P1, either in clockwise direction or in anti-clockwise direction. Then we observe the dramatic changes in the intensity which are coming from the polaroid P1. That is, here the intensity is reduced to half. If we rotate this polaroid P1, then here we are getting the intensity that is, will be reduced to here the intensity will reduce to fifty percent to zero, right? When we rotate this polaroid, the vibrations that is electric vector vibrating with reduce its intensity by 50 percent to 0 percent right if keeping this two stationary if we rotate p1 so this one is the pass axis p2 and here this one is the pass axis p1 so if we write here this one is the pass axis of p2 right keeping this one is stationary if we rotate the pass axis or if you rotate the polaroid P1, so if we rotate this polaroid means it axis also rotate with that one. So if we write if it rotates with an angle theta, right? So this polaroid P1 rotates with an angle theta, then if we draw parallel for the P2 axis that is P1 axis if we draw parallel like this then here the angle between pass axis P2 to the pass axis P1 will be theta right so are you observing here if we rotate the polaroid P1 then pass axis that is pass axis P1 means angle theta with the pass axis P2 that is for the first polaroid that is here the polaroid P2 is keeping stationary if we rotate P1 then if we rotate P1 by the theta then this pass axis makes an angle theta with the pass axis 2 then the electric vector which are coming from P2 that is the polarized electric vector which will come and falls onto the polaroid P1 by the component that is E cos theta, right? So this component will fall onto the axis that is polarized P1. E cos theta is the component of the intensity that is electric vector. E represents the electric vector. So if we resolve this one, then we get here we get the cos theta. Right? So if we resolve this component along this, here we get the component E cos theta. So this cos theta will pass through the polarized P1. Next, here we get the intensity I. We can write I is equals to I naught cos square theta. So this one gives the intensity of the electric vector that is light vector which is passing through P1 that is followed by P2 and P1 we get the final intensity I1 is equal to I0 cos square theta here I0 is the intensity so this one is the I0 I0 is the intensity of the electric vector which is passing from polarized P2 so from here the intensity which are coming can be taken as I0 right so here i is the intensity of the transmitted vector that is polarized light that is the polarized light i is the intensity of the intensity of the polarized light when rotating the polarized P1. So this one we call as 
follows law. So I is equals to I not cos square theta is the Mollus law. So this one is very important. They ask for the two marks. So what is Mollus law? Right. So here I is the final intensity which will come from that is transmitted from the polarite P1 which is followed by P2. So I know the intensity of the polarized light that is which is followed by the polarite P2 and I is the intensity of the polarized that is final polarized the light followed by P1 and P2. So the statement I is equals to I not cos square theta we call as that one as Mollus law. Right. So the statement of the Mollus law is the intensity of the transmitted wave or the intensity which are coming from the polarite that is second polarite. If we consider this one as the first polarite and this one is considered as the second polarite, the intensity of the electric vector which are coming from the second polarite varies as square of the cosine of the angle between the two polarites that is first polarite and the second polarite. So this is the statement of the Mollus law. So the we call this one as first polarite and second polarite otherwise here we given the name for the P2 we call this one as polarizer and we call P1 as analyzer right so P2 is called as polar polarizer and P1 we call as analyzer or we can simply say that this one is the first polarite and this one is the second polarite the intensity which will be coming from the intensity of the electric vector which are coming from the second polarite is varies as the square of the cosine of angle between the angle between the analyzer so this one is the polarizer angle between the polarizer and that of the analyzer so if we observe here this is the pass axis p2 and this one is the pass axis p1 so theta makes the angle between polarizer and analyzer right so this one is the Mollus law if the theta varies from 0 to if we for one rotation the theta varies from 0 to 360 degree for one rotation right so if the theta value is 0 then we get the intensity i is equals to so cos 0 is 1 so i is equals to i naught the intensity which we are getting here we will get here right next if we put the value angle theta is equals to 90 degree that is the polarite p2 is perpendicular to the polarite p1 then the intensity will be 0 because cos 90 is 0 so 0 into i naught is 0 so i naught is equals to 0 represents what there will be no light passing from the polarite p1 right So if we discuss the cases here, we have i is equals to i naught cos square theta. So this one is the Mollus law. So it is very important. They ask for the two marks or three marks. So the statement of the Mollus law is the intensity intensity of the polarized light is varies as 
square of the cosine of angle between the polarizer and polarizer and analyzer right so the intensity this one is the intensity of the polarized light which passing through the polarizer and analyzer varies as varies nothing but i is proportional to cos square theta right varies as square of the cosine of angle between theta so here theta is the angle between the polarized to to the polarized one that is polarized two is taken as polarizer and polarized one is taken as analyzer so these are the names given this one polarizer that is it polarized the unpolarized light and analyzer means here we are observing the intensity that's why we given the name analyzer so this is the statement of the mollus law right so what happens for one rotation if we did one rotation for the polarized two keeping polarized one constant so this one is the we take on this one as the polarized two or this one we call as polarizer and here right this one is the axis and here is the axis so when theta is equal to the angle between polarizer p2 and to the polarizer p1 keeping p2 is stationary if we rotate both with the same angles then there will be no change in the electric intensity that is electric vector which will be vibrate in the same intensity so keeping p2 stationary p1 is rotating so if we rotate initially these two are parallel so these two are parallel nothing but theta is equals to zero so if theta is equals to zero then we get the intensity i is equals to i not right so for the standard angle next we rotate p1 by the angle theta is equals to 90 degree then intensity i is equals to that is p1 is perpendicular to p2 so if this first polarized is like this then the second polarized will be like this so are you observing here this one is the first polarized and this one is the second polarized so these two are perpendicular to each other then angle theta is 90 degree so cos 90 is zero then intensity is zero so intensity i is equals to zero nothing but here it is minimum so here it is maximum so intensity is zero nothing but so here we have unpolarized light when it falls to the polarized p1 then here we get polarized after passing through p2 if the theta is 90 degree then here we are not getting any type of the light vector are you understanding here because the intensity is zero nothing but i is equals to zero there will be no light which are passing through the polarized p1 so here only the light all the light here get absorbed so there will be no light for the transmission so this is for when theta is equals to 90 degree so next when theta is equals to 180 degree then i is equals to cos 180 is minus 1 So square is plus one. Then we get I is equal to I naught. That is again maximum, right? For 180 degree. Next, if we rotate for 270 degree, what happens? I is equal to cos 270. Also, we get the value zero. Then intensity I is equal to zero. This one is the minimum, right? So if we did for 90 degree and 270 degree. then we get the intensity minimum that is there will be no light will be transmitted from polarized p1 so all the light will be get absorbed in the polarized p1 so next theta is equals to 360 degree that is nothing but theta is equals to 90 degree again 
oh, sorry, zero degree again we get the intensity maximum. So if we observe here for one complete rotation, we get two maximums and two minimums. Right? That is the minimum we getting at when theta is equals to 90 degree. That is when theta is equals to 90 degree, that is these two polaroids are perpendicular to each other, then all the light is observed. There will be no light there for the transmission. That is completely observed by the polaroid P1. So for one complete rotation, we get two values that is two maximums and two minimums. Right? So by observing this, the intensity is varying that is maxima, minima, again maxima, again minima. So if we observe in the wave means, here if you observe the amplitude is maximum, here it is amplitude 0, maximum 0, again here is the maximum, again here is the 0. Right? So this shows that when the intensity is varying, that means the light is transverse in nature. So this gives the proof for the polarization proves that the light is a transverse wave. So intensity varies. So as the intensity varies, hence light is a transverse wave. Right. So if you observe here, the intensity goes on varying. So for any other angles between 0 and 90 degree, that is for 30 degree, 45 degree, then the value of the intensity lies between maximum and minimum. So if we consider for 30 degree, then we get the value in between 0 and I0. So similar 92, 180, again here intensity here is decreases, again here the intensity increases, again it comes to decreases. So if we take further rotations, again increases, decreases, likewise. So in longitudinal wave, the intensity remains constant. So intensity will not vary. Hence, if the intensity goes on varying, hence we prove that the intensity varies. Hence, we prove that the light is a transverse wave. So polarization is a phenomenon which proves light is a transverse wave. For this, we considering two polarized. So when unpolarized light falls onto the polarized P2, here the intensity reduces to half. Again, this electric vector which are perpendicular to the orientation of the molecules in P2, these are the electric vectors which again falls to the polarized P1. If these pass axis are same, that is parallel theta is equals to 0 degree, then we get the electric vectors which are perpendicular to the orientation of the molecules. When we rotate this P1 by an angle theta, then from here the electric vector will be reach the P1 by the component, that component is E cos theta. So E is the electric vector, that is E here is the, if this one is the electric vector, then it makes an angle with the theta, then this component becomes E cos theta. So from here, in this direction, it reaches the polaroid P1, then here we getting the intensity. So intensity varies as the square of the cos of the, that is varies square of the cos of the theta between polarizer and analyzer, right? So this one P2 we call as polarizer and P1 we call as analyzer. So polarizer, by using analyzer, we can reduce the intensity from 50%. So here it is reduced. So here we get the intensity is 50%. So we can reduce this intensity to 0, right? 0%. That is, we can Using the analyzer, we can reduce the intensity 50% to 0%. That is, there will be no transmitted light through the polaroid P1. For that, 
by using this one by rotating the p1 we can reduce the intensity by 50% to 40 or we can make it 30 20 or 15 either we can make it as zero right so this is the application of the polar lights so these are the two identical polar lights so in these two the molecules are oriented along the horizontal means here also the molecules are oriented along horizontal only right so polar lights are used in to reduce the so polar lights are used to reduce the intensity so reduce the intensity polar lights are going to use to reduce the intensity then these are used in sun glasses photographic camera and also for 3d picture so these are the applications of the polar lights so as we use the polar light sun glasses that is the intensity of the sunlight will be reduced either 10% to 20% or up to 0% and also the be used in the photographic photographic camera and also be used in the 3d picture so these are the applications of the polar lights right so this is about the polarization so in the next class we will discuss polarization by reflection and also the polarization by that is scattering of polarization right so by this we can complete this chapter by the ending of these two concepts that is polarization by reflection and polarization that is scattering of scattering by polarization so this chapter is also for nine marks right so maximum question from this topic they will ask means straight malus law either for one mark or explain the malus law for two marks or they may ask for the three marks so the statement and also the mathematical relation so when is intensity maximum intensity is maximum 0 degree and 180 degree the intensity is minimum at 90 degree and 270 degree that depends on the rotation of the polaroid p1 so if we rotate both in the same angles means there will be no change always these two axes will be parallel then always the intensity we give the maximum keeping one stationary and another one if you rotate means we get variable intensities maximum minimum so when the intensity varies then we prove that the light waves are transverse in nature right so this is about the polarization so in the next class we will discuss reflection and scattering then